Yeah, everything is noise away. in a different direction, and it's just a matter of yeah. trying to listen to everything because it's simultaneous, mm-hmm. and, but at different volumes, it's a good and way it's it. not necessarily all the same information that you're being told. Yeah. For any occasion, so keep patting down weight and comics and conversation. Keep the conversation moving along. Keep bringing comics, keep your local store strong. If it's hard, then it's a job for the challengers. Comics and conversation, y'all. From Challengers Comics and Conversation in Chicago, this is Contest of Challengers, a comics industry business podcast with Patrick Brower and W. Dell Bush. There's occasionally so many chips left over from the bag that you can't keep some in the bag that can't fit in the tray. Right. Yeah, this is not one of but, those But that's so rare. Yeah. But, I mean, if you get a nice little arc to it, you know, a little yeah, I, uh, con, concave? Uh, convex. Vex is, back, vex is up? Oh, vex is... I, I thought Vex was... Yeah, I don't know. One of the I mean, two. we could look it up. Concave or convex. I'm not going to. A nice little arc. The, the thing that's interesting about the Chipotle chips is that they are... Like, it is sort of like... You know, it's it's not a regulation pour. Like they just pour it's some random. into the bag. It's completely random. And the it's good not thing like about when that, you get something at at uh, you know at a fountain drink from a drive through, they just push a button in the size and it fills yeah, up. It fills exactly amount. the right amount of things. Yeah. Um. So I mean, that's that's the role of the dice. Is that sometimes you get a bag and it's like, oh my god, they gave me so many chips, and you feel like this little treat. But like. In order for that to feel like a treat, there have to be times where it's like, yeah. I didn't get a lot. Otherwise, that was... the treat is just the regular amount that you expect. Chipotle to sponsor Contest of Challengers. <laughs> because, let's face it, we, and especially you, mm-hmm. eat Chipotle a good amount. They tell you, I got, because I'm in their rewards program, I got a, like a, a urine recap email. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, I'll, let me see if I can bring it up real quick. That Does it tell you, like... Hey, you ordered this many quesadillas and yep. this many chicken bowls. Uh, sort of. It's more just like, uh, here's your favorite meal. Here's where you are compared to like other Chipotle fans. Nowhere near them because nobody else Happy, just it, gets it was that. My, okay, so uh, March 30th was my three-year Chipotle anniversary. Wow. Here's a little animated gif. Oh, look at that. It's a, it's a three with it's some... A, it's a foil three. Like chips. Uh, I'm a something. founding member. Yes. Uh, I was one of the first to join Chipotle were, Rewards. I remember the day. Uh, your trips to Chipotle put you in the top 1% of Chipotle fans. Wow. I believe that. Uh, do you know how many times in the last, I guess, 30, 365 days uh, I ordered Chipotle? Uh, wait, hold on. Um, 104. 74 times. Oh, wow. I earned 30 rewards. I just assumed it was twice a week. Uh, so that's the thing. Like, it used to be twice a week. Yeah. But in the last year, it's yeah. cut down a little bit. Um, so I'm actually embarrassed that I was so wrong, so high. Y- I mean, you definitely number. assumed it a minimum of twice a week. Yeah. Uh, my, to-go, my go-to my go entree uh, is, a, of course, a chicken quesadilla. Sure. Uh, that's 4,200... Well, I'm sorry. 424,557 other people's favorite orders. Oh, too. man. I thought you were going to say that's how many calories it was for the year. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the, where they get stuff wrong is because some, I will generally order for both of us if both of us are getting yes. something from Chipotle. Yes. Uh, my spice level is tomatillo green chili salsa as the most often ordered spice. That's yours, not yeah, mine. But, but also, it's, it's erroneous because I order... Half that, and then half the just the chunky salsa. Uh, so that cuts the tomatilla in half. Between Team Guac or Team Queso? Uh, team Guac, all I, the way. I'm, of course, Team Guac, because you ordered guac five times this year. That's 1.3 pounds of guac. Huh. Uh, I am, did I tell you that I bought a uh, a container of guac, fresh guac, you, you at did. the grocery store last week? And you just did. Ate the whole thing. Ate the entire thing in one yeah. sitting? Yep. It was a pound of guacamole. Yeah, I did not ask any follow-up questions when you told good. me that. It was very good. I just was like, mm-hmm. uh, I'm one of eight eight hundred and seventy one thousand five hundred thirty four rewards that. members in Illinois. Uh, I am a local legend. Uh, we knew that seventeen thirty three North Damon Avenue is my favorite Chipotle location. Sure, just by proximity. Yeah, um, local that, legend Dal Bush in the house, and that's it. Uh, what one of the neat things is how the many bite. bags of chips did you buy in the course of the year? Say. Come on. Um, by scrolling to the bottom of the email, I, I got ten extra reward points. Which wow. was nice of them. Is there any yeah. way that we can keep track of customer purchases currently in cumulatively sure. in managed comics or Shopify? In Shopify, it's already doing it. Is it? Yeah. Okay. 
So, so if so, someone were to say to me, hey, did I buy Strange number two? No, because um, the way that we can't bring subscription orders directly into POS right. means that if it's a right, subscription item, we all, can't track all it. all they're buying is subscription. Yeah, yeah got generic it. subscription okay. items. If they were doing it like yeah. weirdly mail order mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. have a complete list of everything they bought. Sure. Um, online orders, in-store, things you buy off the shelf, absolutely yes, all of it. Um, but yeah, subscription items, until we can get a way to bring subscription orders into Shopify without losing uh, the SKU information, the discount information, the tax information, uh, we can't do that. And boy, that's that's a thing that... So never then, huh? I really need that. I really yeah, need that to You heard there. me. You heard what I said. Sorry, Brian. Coming um, at me with, with Abdul the Butcher references. Yeah. How... Dare you. Yeah, there's a lot of fun things that are in the works for managed comics, so I'm grateful for all of them. But boy, the the two main things that we desperately need and and frankly needed four months ago um, are uh, a way to bring subscription items directly into point of sale uh, that costs us dozens of hours every single week. Uh, it makes Wednesdays kind of impossible. Uh, and, and this is with your it, hack. If you didn't yeah. have your hack, I would have literally... I was going to say killed myself, but I would have <laughs> killed someone else by this point. Yeah, I mean, we probably would have had to go back to a, a different system because it was just yeah. untenable. Um, as it is, it is barely tenable. Um, and then we definitely need like a, a more robust initial order system, which I know is in the works, and I know it's a thing that, that they're working on, but boy, oh boy, uh, the amount of stuff that we kind of can't... like It is it is difficult with how many different vendors we have to not have a function where we can look at their entire catalog place orders reasonably, and then upload them reasonably. Instead, it's like you're kind of just throwing subscription data onto... Uh, An order? Uh, well, uh, onto a vendor's platform, and then digging around for the rest of it to make sure you don't miss anything. Like, as it is, we do FOCs on Penguin Random House, and all we ever upload to Penguin Random House, because it's so difficult to do initial orders through Managed Comics, is just the subscription numbers. But that means that if there's like something like a manga that we wouldn't necessarily have a subscription order for but would want to carry off the shelf because it sells, we have to hope that we're catching that on FOC because there's no way to catch it on the initial order because we do not have an initial order program, really, that's that's allowing us to get all that stuff in. Um, so, yeah, boy, that uh, that's the number two, though. Number one is we desperately need a way to get subscription items directly into Shopify POS. Gotta have it, like... That's. I was talking to you, Patrick, a couple days ago, and I said basically, if if we'd known that we weren't going to have that, we literally would have never switched from from uh, Comic Suite and RMH to Manage Comics because that's a sort of like core tool of our point of sale system. That to not have it is basically to not have a functioning point of sale system. Okay, so I'm gonna say that a we still believe in the program and the people behind it. Sure. And we're excited for these changes. We're just blowing off a little steam here. I'll, B, eh. what you meant to say was we wouldn't have switched <laughs> yeah. yet. For sure. Yeah. We would I mean, have we, waited. We were we were always going to want to switch to managed comics, but it's it's a thing that we had thought the and, and honestly Brian as well had thought that the, the feature set was more stable and robust than it was. And then yeah. one one of the things is it's it's easy to not get mad at anybody for this because and I'm with, not. with the data that they had sure and with the bugs happen man advice they had from their beta testers sure they saw the program as further along its functionality than it wound up actually being right and i think there were things that they didn't realize that they would need because no one had told them hey this is a thing a store needs right until i'm not gonna say until we did but until other people did. But, and, so, and like, I, this is, I'm just being honest here. That's what we want out of Contest of Challengers. Uh-huh. That we want to be honest. We also don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But, I mean, this is stuff that, that I I feel like we talk about a lot. And I feel like needs to, to be said is that th- there are things that are being worked on now. And, and there are, they are useful things. But, like, there's kind of top of the list things that it's like, I, I would go without some of these, like, you know, additional quality of life improvements if I could get, like, the core functionality that I need to do my job. This is where there being 2,400 different comic stores uh-huh. comes into play because you and I both consider these things to be incredibly important and frustrating not to have. I wonder how many other stores are like, nah, I don't need that. Well, I mean, the ability to pull subscriptions into point of sale is 
one of the main benefits of having a computerized point uh, subscription management system. Yeah, but how many of these stores are just using managed comics for subscription management and not for uh, for a point of sale system? Yeah. That feels weird to me. I mean, I, I understand, I, I, but I know I, that there I, are stores that do sure, that. Sure, I don't know the number. And if Brian right. wants to email me and go, six people are using it as a point of sale system, I'd be like, I get it now. Yeah. But I don't, one, I don't feel like that's a representative number. And two, that's... Also, it, Brian, don't do that. You have more important things to do. Yeah. Um. So one, I, I yeah, I don't think so. And two, I. that means that, that Managed Comics is doing a, a poor job of articulating to people what the benefit of their platform is. Well, that's what we do. I guess. That's our job. Like, the benefit in it is is a point-of-sale system, is a way to have all that stuff automated in a way where your transactions are speedier, where you, as as either a store owner or an employee at a store who's helping a customer, can spend more time interacting with that customer in a positive way that, that helps your business, helps you move more product, helps you, like, create... <laughs> there, there are times when I'm like, shh, don't talk to me concentrating on ringing, up, ringing your stuff up. I, and, and that's that's the thing for me as well. And that sucks. Like, that's the last thing I want to do is, is have a customer, like, stand there in silence for two minutes because, like, I can't talk to you while I'm trying to navigate multiple menus to make sure everything gets rung up correctly, both for our inventory and for the person who's paying money for them. I told Molly Jane that the per, the per one of the purposes of having two people ringing people up is mm -hmm. that whoever is doing the actual ringing up is concentrating on that. So the other person makes the small talk. Right. Only I never do that when she's the one ringing people up. You do. No, you you do it. I, not, I see you do it. Not every time. No, I think you're very good at it Wednesday mornings. And I know that's a, a time where you would rather be focusing on some of the computer and paperwork stuff that yeah, you and, have your whole day ahead of you. And you have to spend, like, it's, it's not that Molly Jane can't talk to customers because she's very good at it. She just can't do that and ring them up because of how arduous it is can. to ring them up. Uh, it's not that she can't, it's that none of us can. But yeah, anyway. I, I mean, I got to tell you, Wednesday mornings, I opt out, basically, of ringing people up. I would rather work on, like, receiving UPS orders and doing, like, um, shipping things and, and getting people's books. Because the idea of having to sit there and, like, go through, like, you know, um, someone's stack of, of subscriptions first thing in the morning and have to juggle all that... While there's a line of people, it's just like, this would just stress me out. There, like, there's several people that have been lately, as they see us sorting things, like, oh, that's what you do now? You sort them by price? Yep. Yeah. We don't, have to. Don't get used to that, though. I mean... Let's hope. Yeah, I, I mean, this is all stuff that, as always, it's on a roadmap. I know it's on a roadmap. Yeah. It's just like, it's a thing where I would maybe stress that, that without knowing what everyone else is doing and how they're making use of managed comics and Shopify, uh, that... It was a thing that, that I understood that it came out of nowhere and it, it was not accounted for in the roadmap and the allocation of resources. Yeah, and then the but the tile, the app that we bought, we bought to take care of that yeah. did not. Well, that's the thing. Like That was how the system... They were always going to do like... An order a, just came through now that we're closed. Of for course. The a, the, great. That's what we have an online storefront for. Well, um, so a, it's a club member. Great. Um, the, the tile was always a stopgap thing and then the tile wasn't even that so like i get that you know finding that out in late december early january while you have other stuff that you're working on you know means that things have to move around and this is a much bigger project that you were not necessarily fully equipped for and then obviously everything else happens and, and we're still in the midst of a pandemic and etc cetera, etc cetera. but like end of the day is like it is mid-april and we do not have that yet and it's like if you would have told me it was going to take two months i'd be like god that sucks but okay but in to be in mid-April, it's like, I cannot believe this. I cannot believe well, that it's, it's still it's our day-to-day -day life. it's in mid-April without a, hey, estimated to be this date or whatever. Yes, I guess. It's like when we leave a task list behind, <laughs> we'll, we'll make a list of... Well, yeah, I don't know why no. you're laughing. I, I'm, I want to know where you're going with it. We make a list of things that need to be done. They're not written down in order of importance. They're written down in order we thought of. Right. So it's not like start at the top and work your way down and, oh, I didn't get to the bottom four. Maybe the bottom four were super important. Yeah. I wanted to talk about checking in the Marvel books today, but I didn't okay. think we were finished with the other topic. Did all of the Marvel and... comic show? Well, that's the question, Dad. <laughs> what is all? No, they did. So anyway, okay. we got we got next week's Marvel book. We got next week's Marvel trades yesterday. Sure. Normally it would come today. 
We got next week's Marvel books today. Normally, it would come Monday. Did you find my little check-in sheet? And I uh, didn't even look at it. Okay. Didn't great. even look for it. I did that Wednesday night. Yep. Yeah, you always do it. I always and, do it. And I know it's there. Never enter my mind. Okay. Maybe you can use it tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I mean, ne- ev- everything is there. Okay. My point is that it's nothing. Oh, no. It's it's very small. When four, so Four boxes. When we stack it all up, mm-hmm. stand it up and down, two. Yeah. So what that means would be one diamond box. Yeah. 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 There is not. I mean, yep. and if you look at it, it's like, oh, it's Captain America Zero. Mm-hmm. It's Wolverine. It's the Titan Hulk. Yep. But that's it, basically. And, and, and even so, there's so few of those. Yeah. I mean, the Titan Hulk, we did a, a bunch because we did multiple covers. Um, hopefully Doesn't people like will care. Well, I mean, more than we normally would. No, I know. I'm just saying how... It, we didn't do X-Men numbers, but uh, we did. Sure. Also, I, more I, than I flipped through Hulk. it. Do you still read that book? I do, yeah. Do you like that book? It's okay. Uh, I do not like the design of the Titan Hulk. Oh, yeah. I mean, I getting five and now, I guess, soon, six issues in on a, a Donny Cates Marvel book... Is it's way unheard longer of for than you. it usually lasts, so yeah. I must really like it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we heard Marvel has transportation issues for the month. Sure. Like, but... ASM got pushed back a week. That was supposed to be on the 20th, and now it's the 27th. We're doing FOC stuff for mid-May, and it's like... Four books? It's like five comics, one of which is a second print. Well, people said that... But also a bunch of graphic you've... novels, but they don't come out Other stuff week. you've FOC'd counts for those weeks because they were... Rushing things for Easter. Oh, okay. I guess we'll see. Yeah, that was a point someone brought up about there's only four books on Marvel this week, and mm-hmm. other people said, no, it's Easter related. Okay, maybe. So, yeah, I don't I don't know if that's a thing, but yeah, uh, moving Amazing Spider-Man back, and it's it's not... Which is a trucking issue, I think they said. Sure, but think of the fact that Amazing Spider-Man used to be weekly, mm-hmm. and that'll be like a month and a half in between. Definitely felt like it was on an extended hiatus. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I think the the original first uh, shipping week for Amazing Spider-Man number one was supposed to be like the 13th, maybe? Yeah. The 6th or the 13th, and then it got pushed to the 20th, and then it got pushed again to the 27th. We know it exists. We've read it. We read most of it, yes. Yeah, not the pages they blanked out. No. And we liked it. I liked it. (coughs) Excuse me. It's nice that it's an all Peter Parker issue. As far as Spider-Mans go. Yep. Spider-Mans. I can't believe that Marvel calls multiple... Captain's America. <laughs> Captain Americas. Uh-huh. As if they were the captain of multiple Americas. Yes. But they're... The captain is plural. There are more captains. It's the same America. hmm It's like whenever someone on a TV show says, chomping at the bit. Nope. Champing at the bit. Horses yeah. champ. Yep. Uh, that yeah. wasn't an issue of Mets Dinner Table this past uh, week. Somebody used chomping at the bit, and I nearly spit out my lunch. Oh, I thought it was going to be someone else correcting them. That sounds like a book where they would get it right. I feel like they did in, in previous issues. There were a bunch of weird typos and like, grammatical errors in the new issue of KRDT. The loss of Steve Johansson, is that what you're, we're saying here? Maybe. Um, mm-hmm. it, there were. There's a few, like, one of the recurring kind of errors that they've had in KRDT over the years is, like, bad formatting for word balloons. Yeah, where like they'll they'll have something in a script and then they'll paste it into word balloon and it'll it'll run off basically, so the last word in the word balloon suddenly isn't there. Huh. Um, this is a thing that I realize how hard it is. The few times that I've written a script and tried to lay out a page and do everything like old Christmas cards or whatever, sure. I wind up having to literally rephrase what I'm saying. By half? You have to, Most of the time, because of how little space you have. Yeah, you look at a comic page and you think, you're looking at a word balloon, you're like, oh, that's, you know, a paragraph, and it's like, it's not. It's like one and a half sentences. Yeah. (laughs) You you look at, it really teaches you how to get to the heart of what you're trying to say. Be more economical with your word choices. But it was easy for me because... Brevity, Patrick, it's a solo wit. Mostly I was dialoguing myself, so I was... In the headspace, pretty well. <laughs> sure. But when you're, you know, when you have to have someone else's voice, it's difficult to figure out their shortcuts or whatever. But the point I was making with Marvel is that if we've told, we talked about before, regardless of how many Marvel books you listener have on your subscription list, your managed comics list, as it were, available at challengescomics.com/slash <laughs> subscriptions or managed comics or whatever. Or just challengescomics.com. You can yeah, go fine. click on the managed comics button or the subscription header in the menu marvel drives the sales of the industry meaning if it's a small marvel week people don't come in right saga is a bit of an outlier but a lot of the audience that gets saga literally just get saga while people who are coming in for their marvel books 
will get other stuff. They are the audience that's going to try other Marvel books or pick up, you know, Chip, Chip Zdarsky's Batman or a new Spawn series or whatever. Uh, they definitely will, will try a lot more stuff than some of the bigger books at other companies. And even when it's a big Marvel week, it's not like we do a ton of Marvel sales on a Wednesday, but it still that's what people it gets people in the door. Right. Like it'll get them in not only for their that week's Marvel stuff, but maybe, you know, if they've not come in in a few weeks and it's a big Marvel week, they'll get all of their last few weeks worth of stuff, or they'll get some supplies, or they'll get an action figure, or they'll bring their kids, or whatever. Um, there's a lot of positive things that happen, um, but of course that only happens if there's Marvel books. Well, next week DC is picking up the slack with. Um, a lot of my favorites of theirs, like Nightwing or Nice House on the Lake. Yeah, I or other books I've forgotten, but Batman I wrote down Superman. Newsletter. Yeah, Batman's World's Finest. Yeah, yeah. which is I, I just read that today, and that was really good. There's yeah. a bit where uh, characters are, are telling a story about uh, ancient China, and the art changes in some of the the like backgrounds, and I'm like, oh, cool. I wonder who they got to come in and and do this stuff. Because it, it doesn't look like Dan Moore's art. Dan Moore is doing, like, the foreground images, and the background images are very, like, it's like Phil Dalrymple or somebody. Can I make a guess? Guess. Dan Mora. It was Dan Mora. Yeah. <laughs> he was just doing a, a very different style because he's that good. Uh, it's a great issue, by the way. It's really clever. I like that you referenced Feral Dalrymple and knowing that he's got a book coming out. Yeah, true. Sunny Liu. It also looks a bit like Sunny Liu. Yes. Um, yeah, it's... Um, so, anyway... World's we... Finest is really good. We expect weird sales the last few weeks of April. We do. And that is not a good thing. It's not ideal. But, you know. That's the industry. Yeah, our A lot of our, our finances are based entirely on how much product comes out and when it comes out. Uh, two things we absolutely can't control. Um, so you just kind of hope that you can weather the light weeks or that people will, will find other stuff. Not a lot you can do to plan around it. For me personally, it's such a weird experience now selling new comics because in the past, I checked in everything. Sure. I checked in Marvel. I checked in DC. I checked in Image. I checked in everybody. Yeah. But now, because they all come in different days, I don't work Mondays. Marvel comes in Monday. Yeah. Most of the time, DC comes in Thursdays. I don't work Thursdays. Right. Even if it does come in on a Wednesday, I'm not the one checking it in. No, true. Sure. And, it, you know, I'll look, I'll flip through the boxes and see what's there, but it's not the same thing as sorting through it and taking it all out. And sure. I should still have a better understanding of what's available because I do the new release list and break down the invoices and things right. like that. Like I've already broken down next week's uh, DC invoice. Okay. But and when I say next week, I mean the following week. Not the books we're getting this week. I mean the books we're getting. The 27th. Yeah, I'm looking, around, the 27th. Like, looking for a calendar that isn't even there. <laughs> It's even so much weirder to me because we don't do monthly summaries anymore for Diamond because why? What do you mean? Like, I used to do a separate breakdown of uh, what we spend by category on the invoice. Oh, right. Yeah. That's every cool. month. But because there are so many publishers now, mm -hmm. we just do a standard monthly breakdown per publisher, not per sales category. Okay. And we don't have to because we can look and see what we have in stock of those individual categories and know what money is tied up where that's true so it was just it and also it was a, a thing that once i had a like a year's worth of how much did we spend on marvel how much did we spend on dc how much did we spend it's just for us internally it's never it's not needed for our, our taxes or anything like that yeah i for me the ability to, to retain this information is a lot more difficult because it's so dispersed yeah it used to be consolidated in a really sensible way for me at least and i'm sure for a lot of retailers as well where there would be a monthly diamond catalog and there'd be a weekly FOC order and there'd also be like weekly deliveries. And that was sort of it. You know, we might get restock from another vendor, but initial orders all came through diamond, all of them. Now it's a system where, you know, DC is going to drop their new catalog. I think they did it today. Marvel will do theirs like in a week or 10 days, maybe PRH will have their stuff up alongside the Marvel stuff, but that'll be, you know, IDW and, and, you know, a lot of the manga publishers and then Diamond will do theirs at some point, And that's it. Kind of everybody else. We get deliveries for new comics. Like you said, like three different days of the week. So I'm, I'm not reading stuff all at once on Tuesday nights. I'm reading, you know, a book on Thursday and a couple books on Friday and a few more books on Sunday and maybe some more on Monday night and some more on Tuesday night, um, which is probably better for me in the long run. I, 
certainly the the idea of sitting down for like an hour and a half with a gigantic stack of books is always a little exhausting. Now it's sure. it feels more like reading for pleasure, which is nice. After That's how most people do it. And yeah, it's um, it's definitely harder sometimes to understand kind of what's been announced and what we've ordered and what we haven't ordered yet and what's coming up. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's tough. It feels like you're always underwater. A little bit, yeah. It's for weirdly like it, it was maybe worse theoretically you know having this gigantic catalog that you had to consume all of and remember all of it but i guess my brain just started working that way so now when i get little dribs and drabs of information it's like there's not enough volume there for it to make any impact on me yeah everything is noise in a different direction and it's just a matter of trying to listen to everything because it's simultaneous Mm -hmm. but at different volumes and it's not necessarily all the same information that you're being told yeah yeah, because it will get stuff where it's like, oh, this is an announcement. This is a solicitation, though. Yeah, we we got an email from um, Image today, uh, announcing the uh, the complete all in one die hardcover. Nowhere die in it. hardcover. Yes, <laughs> it sounds like you said die hardcover. You know the John McClane series. Oh no, that's interesting. But what it didn't say anywhere in there is how much it cost, how many pages it is, what else is in it. It's just like literally, we're doing this. Here are links to order it. And the link to, like, the yeah. comic shops was just the local comic shop service. Like, I don't want someone contacting me about this. I This is the first time hearing about it, and I don't even know how to order it. How often would we get solicitations from publishers for, for graphic novels, trade paperback collections, that don't tell you what it's collecting? Mm-hmm. What is it? How often does someone say to you, how, what issues are in this book? You're, and you look at it and say, I don't know. It doesn't say. Let me go yeah. look it up. It also doesn't say, let me page through it by hand and figure it out. <laughs> I have another thing for this, but I want to just note that it is actually kind of fitting yeah. for the concluding element of Die as a comic book series to be Image announcing something that doesn't give me enough information to do anything about it while also informing all of my customers that they should ask for it right now because that's how Die started Yep, with Kieran Gillen and Stephanie Hans and Image announcing it to like Variety because I had people, it was like a Monday or something, I had subscribers emailing me saying, Oh, put me down for that that die book, and I had to go. Do you mean die die die? die, die? die? The, the recently the released Robert Kirkman Chris, Chris Burnham, Burnham series. Like no, the Kieran Gillen series. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, and it's because and then I'm he... at work, and and Image hadn't emailed us yet. They right. literally had just given it to Variety as an exclusive, and you know, I'm sure the creators tweeted about it. But I'm at work. I I need to hear it directly from a publisher, or I'm not going to have time to just be on Twitter catching all this information so <laughs> still waiting for jamie mckelvey's space book yeah right so the or Annie that Wu's way, dead boyfriend Annie was anything yeah anyway catwoman lonely city incentive cover which is coming out this week no the um so the other thing was i think in today's new to order from diamond yeah they had a, a bunch of listings for uh neca decorated half boxes with no images no images none just like a marvel logo and a title that says thor and the description doesn't even tell you what it is. Oh, I can they're, do they're one better. Just generic, because there was a, a listing for a DC NECA box for mm-hmm. Dark Knight's Metal. Yes. Did you look at it? I didn't. The description tells you all about how these boxes have all your favorite Marvel characters on so them. So just the same boilerplate across the board. Yeah, but they never changed it to they, DC. To DC right? It just no, said I Marvel. It. It's. I, that that said, I did order one of each of those. Wow. I would have held off just because it's like... I didn't place it. I, it's just in the I cart. I don't know what these are. You can't ask me to order a decorated box and not show me how it's decorated. That matters. It's literally the only thing that matters about it. I know what boxes are. I need you to show me what I'm ordering. So IDW announced nine new series today. Yes, new Original series? Uh, original. I have your original. So, like, not licensed books. Not like a, yeah. a, a yeah. G.I. Joe comic or a My Little Pony comic. Now, I always take offense when Netflix will have, let's say, Great British Bake Off. Change its name to Great British Baking Show. Okay. And call it a Netflix, Netflix original. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's a show that exists. They're just throwing their name on it. Okay. So... These IDW originals, and, and this is a big deal because, it, as you said, it's not licensed material. It is all new stuff, and it is the first real things shepherded by the former DC black label people who left DC and are IDW. Yeah, and it's definitely a shift for IDW, which is a company had really gotten a lot of their material from Hasbro. Yeah. Um, and now Hasbro's taking that stuff away, so... This summer is when they need to really pivot away from, like, G.I. Joe and Transformers as, as things that are going to help them out, because they are not going to have those. One of the things I've always disliked about IDW is I felt a lot of their logos weren't good enough. 
Huh. And I feel like these logos are better. Okay. But my point is that while they have some big names, one of them being Scott Snyder, and this is like his third comic publisher now, so yes. diminishing returns there. <laughs> but they're still, we're not getting, and this was reason why we segued, we're not getting all the information. No. Some of these are Kickstarter books. Oh, okay. And I feel as a retailer, we should be told that. Yeah, I mean, certainly with things like Comixology Originals, I want to know, hey, this was previously serialized or sold digitally. Yeah. Because that'll help me understand, like, well, how much of my audience has already gotten this, maybe. Right. One of them we have on our shelves. Yeah. Only one issue, though. It's true. And, yeah, I, and, and I'm fine. But the problem is we have it at a much higher price because it was a Kickstarter book. Right. So I'm torn because when it comes available... We want to order it because it is a friend of ours. Right. And we also think it's a good series. Yeah. But I don't want to necessarily have all these, like... It comes with some bonuses. Our, our copy does. The it Kickstarter does. The copy. It does. And it might not have the exact same... I, I don't know if there's back matter or stuff that they wouldn't end up putting in there. Right. But my point is, do we go lower on number one and just try to push what we have? A lot of it depends on... Or forget on... what we have and just order normal for that uh more of the second but a lot of it depends on if there's any sort of returnability options like certainly if, sure. if they offer returnability above a threshold i'll just order that threshold but and then we'll see how what often do. does i well idw does do returnability that's fine for first issues it's fairly yeah. common so the point is i know that one is a kickstarter uh -huh. what about the others yeah right. i don't know well i i know um our former uh prh uh account rep uh matthew klein has a book that's in there. Does he, though? Is he does. that the same one? It is. Okay. Because he just made a big post on social media, like, hey, it's been a, a year that I've been yep. at PRH, and it was a bold move. Yep. Like, he never mentioned his comic coming out. Well, he probably, that would be, I'm not a conflict of interest necessarily, but something I mean, where, where he has to separate It's his own things. personal Instagram page. You can do whatever he wants. I 100% assure you that it is the okay. same Okay, I, I believe you. I believe um, you. Such a weird subject matter for Matthew Klein as well. Yeah. He, he, Emergency rooms and... Superheroes and stuff, though. It's cool. Um, is it superheroes? Yeah, I think there's a superhero element to it. Oh, I don't. I didn't get that at all from the solicitation stuff. I remember there being something in one of the synopses okay. for it. Um, and, but it's there's a bunch of interesting books and, and a lot of interesting creators, um, some that are known to us, some that are a little bit less known. But yeah, I, I'm always you know excited about companies like this um, commissioning a lot of original material. I think... That's the stuff that, that I'm more excited about and can kind of grow our business more than just, like, the umpteenth Spider-Man comic book. Sure. It's just because these are all miniseries, and then yeah. we have the entire Matt Kent universe. <laughs> no. Uh, I, which I forget what it's called. Uh, and also doesn't... It's not a priority for me to find out. Uh, I, I feel like this is so many extra things. I mean, it's a lot of material in the market, it's for sure. It's a lot of material in the market. That yeah. is perfect way to say it. it's well it's something yeah. that you've rightly complained about for a while which is just how much stuff comes out in a given week and how difficult it can be not only for for you know publishers to kind of get the attention of stores but for stores to get the attention of customers um there's a limit to how many you know first issues we can push in a given week it's a very yeah. low number so when you know five or six publishers have brand new launches in a week it's like three of these are going to get killed I They're mean, just not going to make it. How hard did we push six sidekicks? Uh, really hard. Really hard. Really hard. And everybody at Challengers, every employee who's read it, mm -hmm. loves it. Yes. It still didn't do what we were hoping it would do. Yeah. I, it did way better for us than if we would said nothing about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, that's where I land on it. It doesn't hit what we wanted it to. And that's a book that, and, and I don't mean to single that book out, but I mean, that is a thing that we gave as much exposure as we possibly could. Yeah, it's it's frustrating to really get behind something in a serious way and, and try and make it as available for people as possible and, and really, like, put our credibility on the line with it and still have it be something where it's like, it did all right. I mean, it yeah. did, relative, I think, probably to the market, it did great for us. You want to know who today, uh -huh. just today, came out and praised it and wrote a review for it? I don't know where that review is published, but somebody who lauded it as one of the best things they've read recently. Who's that? Noted comic book writer and Sherlock Holmes historian. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Good for him. Good for he's you. Got, and good he's, guess on that. He's got good taste. Was it the Holmes thing? That it was the Holmes it? thing. Yeah. 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 Kareem Abdul-Jabbar 
Yeah. Just wrote, like, you figure if, it, if he was going to review anything from Kyle Starks, it would be old head. Uh, yeah, maybe. But no, it's... It's, How great is that? Like It's uh, really great. And Six Sidekicks is really fun. It's really fun. So both Kyle and Chris were loving it because... <laughs> of course. Chris, well, well like their Chris, Chris loves it because he's a martial arts. He's a kung fu guy. Oh, sure. Yeah. And, you know, Kareem fought Bruce Lee yes. in, what, Game of Death or something. Something like that. And he said, I watched that... I, I'm, not, I'm not as big a fan. <laughs> he said he's watched that, like, you know, 50 times alone when he was in high school. Wow. Over and over. Wow. And Kyle, it's basketball, so... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's a basketball boy. <laughs> anyway, we were using Six Sidekicks as a... And I sold a copy today. Sure. Just because someone wanted a recommendation. Yeah, we came it on the table and we will for and a while. Somebody today asked, hey, what's coming down the pipe that I should be excited for? And I'm like, eight billion genies. Mm-hmm. Do a power bomb. I hate this place. Mm-hmm. And he's like, great, I'll add all three of those on, on Managed Comics. Yeah, they are really And good. then said, which, by the way, I really enjoy Managed Comics. Oh, that's great to hear. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, not to segue really quickly, but I, I will tout again how great it is to have people who we have not even had any real contact with come into the store and say, yeah, I have a subscription here. Yeah. And they do because they did it all online. And we didn't have to, you know, micromanage the process. It didn't take any time out of our day. It's just like, oh, yeah, we did have to make a divider for someone whose name we didn't see before. I mean, I wish we would get a notification saying, hey, so-and-so has signed up to your store, but whatever. That would be. I mean, there's, look, there are a laundry list of, of quality of life improvements that I could probably make a list for, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, the They're... two main things are, are working. <laughs> Once those are, are great and solid, uh, Brian will get an incredibly long email list of things where it's like, Hey, it would be cool if it did this. Like, I'll just, and I hate saying this because it's going to make work for someone and I don't want them to spend hours on it now. Um, an ability for managed comics to understand when someone is placing a pre order for something they already have a subscription for and to give them a little pop up saying, Hey, are you sure you want a second copy of this? Because the amount of people that have a subscription to something and don't understand they have a subscription, so they keep pre ordering future issues. And then we get them in and we're like, This guy doesn't want two copies of this. Or I have to then go through the pre-orders and go, no, I'm canceling these extra ones because I didn't realize you were already signed up for that book and you don't realize what this means. That's a thing that I would love to have there be some sort of algorithm for. But anyway. You know what else there could be an algorithm for? What's that, Patrick? You know what? I can't do it. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I'm... Personal grooming. I'm seg- <laughs> segueing into personal grooming. Personal and I grooming. Just, it just, I had it and then you just kept going. Oh, and I'm like, ah, oh, God, let me wait and see where he lands. No. Algorithm. Algorithm. <laughs> Support for Contest of Challengers is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer, 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code challengers at manscaped.com we're happy to have manscaped as a sponsor because we already use these products before they even approached us yep we use the products we enjoy the products and we were happy to let people know that manscaped is something that they should have in their lives and that they can also get a pretty good savings on manscaped includes waterproof trimmers it reduces foot odor the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer helps reduce nicks it reduces the risk of ingrown hairs and reduces the risk of grooming accidents which, pretty big thing. Reducing grooming accidents, I'd maybe put it at the top of that list. Yeah, right? Let's have I that. I would not save that for last. That's kind of a key component yep. of the whole Manscaped deal. And speaking of Manscaped deal, 20% off if you use the discount code CHALLENGERS with an S at manscaped.com. Okay, but I did want to get back to Penguin Random House for a minute. Okay. Because we got in uh, six boxes today. Okay. Four Marvel. Mm-hmm. One had one Asterix book. No, I'm sorry. Um... Alistair and the Lost Magic or whatever. Yeah, Aster. Yeah, the, Aster. the PRH graphic one. And one was a small box of reorder stuff. Okay. In that small box of reorder stuff was three pages of what was supposed to be in the box. And it also said that there should have been three boxes in the order. Well, okay. There was one box. In it was a handful of books that we actually ordered were on the invoice. Mm-hmm. A handful of novels that we did not order, <laughs> including multiple copy, copies of Devil in the White City, 
by Eric Larson, yeah, different Eric Larson, yeah, put it out. Uh, which <laughs> made Gina think that they were just using it as packing material because <laughs> the book's been out for so long. Mm-hmm. And I said, my my guess is that some airports are finally doing returns. Maybe. Uh, but also, everything in the box mm-hmm. beat to shit. Oh, great. As in, I'm saying we can't sell it. Okay. Did you do a claim? No, because it's like six books out of this massive invoice, and I don't know... Like, do I report everything else is missing? No. There should be. Are there two so more boxes coming? You can leave it for me. I'll investigate it. So uh, the, uh, they're one, it's piled up on the back counter sure. with the invoice, but it's so few things one from of, a big ass order. So wh- this is when I first kind of was going to say this to start with, but um, I'll say it now. One of the problems with how PRH does its packing invoices is that they will include an invoice for literally everything in the order that went out. Even if it didn't all go out at once or from the same warehouse, there will be stuff where it's like, (sighs) these are things that could be coming from somewhere else. So what's on there is things that were back ordered, things that are coming from other warehouses, things that are coming from the same warehouse, but not on the same shipment. Um, So what I'll probably end up doing is taking that that list and then going to PRH's site and then trying to find like, okay, give me the tracking numbers. Did all this stuff go out? And then, you know finding something that actually was in the box and then saying, okay, well, according to this list on their website, what else should have been in that box? Because there will be breakdowns of like individual box manifests. And then it's just off of that saying, okay, well, was everything there? Was everything not there? What was damaged? What wasn't damaged? Yeah, you had me at leave it for you. I thought I'd walk you through what the process is going to be though so you'd understand what was going to happen. Sure. Uh, My favorite error on it though Mm -hmm. Is that it's not <laughs> multiple copies of Devil in the White City? <laughs> no, there's a better one. So there, we had, had two copies of Sandman, of Volume Two. Okay. One copy of Sandman Volume Three. Okay. And we'd ordered uh, Sandman Volume Eleven. So instead of Eleven, we got Sandman Book Two, because it's a Roman numeral on the spine. Oh. And it looks like an Eleven. That's funny. Yep. That's funny. Okay. Uh, at what point do we stop ordering the Sandman trades and just go to the books? I'm, I've already turned the numbers of, of stock levels down for the single volumes, but I I would not feel comfortable discontinuing the single volumes until all three of the books are out. Okay. Because I don't want there to be a situation where someone's reading through it quickly, and it's like, you can't finish the series, the last third of it is coming out. Well, aren't they weekly? Well, that's if that's the case, then sure. But I don't want to do it until we have them all in hand. Gotcha. Well, but, we have an extra volume two. Oh, I'm sorry, an extra yeah. book two. But this not past volume week, eleven with volume with book two coming out this past week, I did turn down all the restock levels for okay. those books. It's just that we got multiple twos in. Those were ordered beforehand. Sure. Uh, it just makes me wonder how they pack, like not off of ISBN, not off of barcodes. Did you look at the spine and saw an eleven and just said, "Okay, they, it's eleven. They can't because we've seen how terrible the descriptions are on those invoices. Yeah. It's hard to even check them in. I can't imagine trying to pull them. That's fair. Uh, There are some Batman books where it's like they opened the front cover, Mm -hmm. took the first page, crumpled it up, (laughs) went to the next page, crumpled it up in a different way. Typical Joker. And then slammed it back. Typical Joker scheme. So pages are sticking out in different directions. And there's one whole trade that, while packed flat, had been bent in half and creased. Oof. But then, I mean, it it is it sounds it is terrible. bad. It sounds yeah. real bad. Yeah, and also, I'm afraid it's going to be one of those. Hey, you have too many damages. You have to send us photos. Oh, you'll or have call. to. We, we you will have to call in. Like if the whole thing is screwed up. I think you need to rephrase that. I'll have to call on Monday. <laughs> um, I don't work Monday. I can't do it. I know they're not open tomorrow. If only. Um, I want to do it so bad. Oh my god. I know how much you love doing extra work on Mondays. I certainly don't mind. Oh, this Monday is is entirely booked but the first five hours of it will be me sitting on my ass at a car dealer nice very comfy chairs and i will be asleep for a lot of it but hopefully five hours with a um, completely completed checklist for your car instead of yeah two hours and nothing got done and none of it is mechanical no well there's one mechanical thing. i mean yeah but it doesn't interfere with the driving of the no nothing is is uh keeping you off the streets and then i have uh, my Monday evening is the fo- is the redo of last Monday. Oh right, okay. So it's like, oh, there's no time to do any. I, I can't even. I can't have physical therapy on Monday because kind of busy week. I know. Up from 
uh, tomorrow through next Friday is fairly booked. Yeah. yeah. That's not even counting the Michael Lark signing. That's true. The Michael Lark signing, which, by the way, the Lazarus Twitter account just posted about it today. That's great. Yeah. I didn't know there was one, so I had to follow it immediately. I, uh, this is probably the, a pretty good weekend for uh, the Lazarus. Uh, yeah, I think so. Twitter account. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, rising again and whatnot. It's true. Yeah. Very on brand for them. Uh, I don't think I remember. I, I I knew it was Good Friday, but Good Friday doesn't have the same connotations to me that it did when I was a child. Sure. When Easter was uh, the second biggest sales holiday of the retail year, not as a child, but when I got older. Sure. But I forgot. And it's rare that Easter and spring break line up. Mm -hmm. So we had people, we were very top heavy today. Sure. People buying what I assume are Easter presents. And I had one person say to the person they're with, like, you're the only person in the world who buys Easter presents. And I had to say, well, <laughs> uh, I can tell you all day has been a lot of Easter presents. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, I, it's a thing that I grew up with. You would get a present in your basket as well. And what's better than a comic book yeah. in an Easter basket? Uh, yeah, I, I... A chocolate bunny. I feel bad saying this because my mom is listening to this. I don't 100% remember what I would get for Easter as a kid. Candy and baskets and stuff for sure. I remember sure. firing eggs and all that sort of activity stuff. Egg hunts. Um, I don't remember if I yeah, had a lot of, like, for, gifts. For us, gifts. It, it wasn't like... Yeah, it wasn't that. It was it was a, a token toy or I, I something. I think I eventually did. I think like there was... Like an Easter bunny Pez, that counts. Yeah, I got some comic books and stuff. It, yeah, but that's my point. Comics in an Easter yeah. basket are great. Yeah, they are. I mean, so are chocolate bunnies. Uh, we grew up in a household that always got, like, the Palmer brand Easter candies. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's uh, chocolatey bunnies. Okay. I don't think I know those. Yeah, you do. It's the budget one at Walgreens. Okay. Yeah. I... Did, did you catch what I said about the bunny? Chocolatey, yeah. 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 It's not milk chocolate. No, nope, chocolatey. It's milk chocolatey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it like, the, we grew up with Easter candy that wasn't quite... Then when, like, you'd have, we'd have a Hershey's egg, and you're like... Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the point is uh, Easter sales. So today was a busier day because of, I think, Easter. And maybe possibly. tomorrow will be as well. Possibly. Who can tell? Uh, one of the great things about the Gotham Central Omnibus that just came out mm -hmm. is it is a redo. They've done, like, collections before. It's, like, remastered, right? It's remastered. They went in and, because it was, uh, I believe, Marie Javins who was behind this, Ed Brubaker reached out and said, can we finally fix some things that have bugged me for forever? <laughs> That's great. For example, there's uh, the, the Joker storyline, which is the second storyline in the trade, yeah. in, in the, in the uh, series, it took place in winter, and there's a lot of snow. And the snow is over, always done by, Mark, by Michael Lark, man, I can't talk, on an overlay. Mm -hmm. When they printed the first round of whatever, they missed the overlays, so there's no snow, <laughs> and there's characters... <laughs> referencing snow uh -huh. and holding hands out to try to get snow when there's no snow visible. Oh, that's terrible. And then he went through and fixed some, like, grammar and some, some spelling mistakes and whatnot. Okay. And then Brubaker put a joke back in that was not appropriate back then or, like, one that wouldn't get past the censors sure. but is okay today. Didn't tell anybody what it was, but there is a joke in this omnibus that doesn't exist Anywhere else in the so, like, collections or not. Core Brubaker fans, get out your copies of Gotham Central yeah. and get out your copy of the Gotham Central Omnibus 2022 edition. So the Track point of down. talking about the Omnibus is we stocked up on this Omnibus for the Michael Lark signing, mm -hmm. signing next week. Even though all the imagery we've used is Lazarus, which we're just doing now. Yes. Uh, this Gotham Central Omnibus is an amazing package and I think... If there's still one at the end of the signing, I'll grab it. I don't want to take one away from people ahead of time. No, me neither, but I realize I don't have Gotham Central uh, collections on my bookshelf. We, so, we I mean, used to. We both got rid of ours. We did, it's true. Yeah. And, and that's why I would be okay having, Not it, having go, it now. Well, having it go to a bigger fan. Someone who yeah. would be more excited to have it and get Michael Lark to sign it. I, it's it's the sort of thing that if I got it, it would sit on a bookshelf and I would read it eventually, but not quickly. Same. I mean, if you look on my bookshelf the next time you're anywhere near it, you can just cast your eyes across it and see how many how much shrink wrap you can still see. Oh, same here. Hellboy, yeah. Hellboy books. <laughs> uh, Hellboy library editions, which are great. I'm glad I have them. I'm glad I've never opened them. Not a single one. <laughs> I believe I've heard you say a few times, 
I should just bring those back. I should just bring those back. <laughs> um, that's why I'm glad that I opened that uh, Weapon X Gallery Edition. Uh, or what, what is it called? Is it Gallery Edition? It's Gallery, yeah. Just Gallery, I think. Uh, I've got it right here. Um, uh, well, anyway, the, I'm glad you did because I, so I was able to see it and tell people how good it is. It's so beautiful. We, we got a bunch extra. Um, yeah, you went a little heavy on the reorder. My goodness. I wanted to put it on the front table because I think it's the sort of book that, that if you open one Where? up... Where? I mean, I'll, I could find space for it probably. You It'll make, go you, you underneath. Could do, you could do it spine up. Yeah, between, okay. Between things. Sure. But I'd want one open just to be like, no, look through this. Like, it's... The reproduction is What's so What's the first good. thing you noticed, Dow? How good the paper is. Yeah, you could have said that more authoritatively, though. How good the paper is! Yeah. That's the first thing you pointed out to me about it. I didn't it. say it authoritatively. I just said it loudly. Oh. It's got a, a, a Katie Power uh, guest starring uh, Uncanny X-Men issue in it, which is more than I could have ever hoped for. Uh, it's got a billion covers. It's got process pages. It's got covers for other books Barry Windsor Smith did at Marvel. Like, just... Other Wolverine and Deadpool and X-Men covers. It's got a very specific odor. It really does, yeah. Look at that paper. Um, it's great, though. I really love it. It's, uh, what is it, 45 bucks, which is amazing considering how much stuff you get in it. Yeah, I think it's a tremendous book for anyone of a certain age uh, who came up on Marvel you Comics. You raved about it so much I did. that I'm like, I should get one. I'm like, I don't have an affinity for that story, though. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I was the age where... Wolverine's origin in Marvel Comics Presents is one of my favorite Wolverine stories, and I'm not really a Wolverine guy. How can that be his origin? They don't call him James Howlett once in that whole book. No, but the Weapon X stuff is the definitive part of his origin. Like, the the James Howlett stuff comes and goes, and, like, the him being... him digging like a Wolverine at some work camp, like, whatever. But him getting turned into an amnesiac weapon by the Canadian government is like iconic like that's that's the part of his origin that got up on the movie screens faster than the rest of it you know what we're eventually going to find out about wolverine is that he's just the latest incarnation of the wolverine and that there have been dozens of wolverines before him okay you know like every other marvel character now yeah it's true like they're doing to moon knight and the well there's a series. better wolverine now does that count? yeah that's true did you see the new costumes for the new hellfire gala yeah they're great the, the, they're insane. The party designs, they're yeah. Great. They're great. Shirtless Gambit, Thirst Trap Gambit, as we call them. Uh, I like weirdly brutal gothic uh, Laura Kinney. With all that's, the spikes in her hair. That's a good look. Yeah. They're all good looks. Um, yeah, I, I was lamenting to somebody the other day that uh, it it bothers me that Russell Dodderman did that amazing red carpet interlocking cover design. Yeah. And Marvel never printed it as a big poster. Nope. Like, they stopped doing panorama posters before that. Yep. And I love those posters, and I would... There's so many interlocking covers they've done since then where it's like, make that poster, but they don't. They only do 24 by 36 posters, yep. and it's all cover designs with giant logos on them, and that's it. All the fun posters they used to do, done. Done. But speaking of fun, I read some previews. What'd you read? Uh, I read Passageway. Oh, yeah, what did you think? Did I the liked it. Did it make sense to you? No, but I feel like it's not supposed to because it's the start of an ending. Okay. It's, I, the, it's the start of the series. I hope you're right. That seems not great for a $17 book, though. For a standalone, yeah. I I was really invested into it mm -hmm. until they go in the hole. Oh, that was the part that worked the best for me. I just love that sort of like descent into the underworld kind of stuff. I mean, it's when so you cool. get there, it's, it's so gorgeous. Cool. But it's so like, what is this? It's so good. But that's... that's Art's real We have to learn more about it. Yeah, it's very creepy, too. They do a great job of being creepy. Atmosphere is, like, what that team does best. Uh, I read The Dogs of London. What is that? That is an Aftershock crime book by Peter Milligan. Oh, okay. And an Argentinian artist. Okay. Uh, I like it a lot. It is just straightforward London crime back in, uh, like, like now, but then also, like, like this guy... Flashback is kids. Main story is when they were te like late teens, early 20s. Mm -hmm. The gang they had, the dogs. And then life how, life how it turns out now. But it's straightforward crime. And okay. it's kind of a, a great bookend because... Uh, do you remember Do you remember Trekker? Not Trekker, that's Ron Randall. Yeah. A Screamer. Okay, yeah, sure. That was like Peter Milligan's first book. And oh. it was a, a futuristic crime book yeah. thing. Yeah. But this, this is just straightforward British crime takes place in the 70s okay um that's cool john lennon had just said that the beatles are bigger than jesus mm -hmm. that kind of thing okay was that the 60s whatever that, that was the 60s. it says when it happens I uh i i thought the art was great it was something i never heard of uh i was very invested in the characters 
And then when it does the jump to the future, I'm like, wait, should we know all this? <laughs> should we know who's still alive? What is happening? At the end There's of... children? Where are the... Ch- what? Are they going to catch up to this timeline at the end of the se- the first season? They will not. They will not. <laughs> they will definitely not. Thank you, Yellow Jacket. Uh-huh. Thank you, Lost. Wait, no. So that was good. And I read some stuff I didn't like, but I don't like talking about what I didn't like. That's fair. That's, that's a thing. And uh, I did the same thing where... I don't think I... Oh, you know what? I finally finished Knighted. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Knighted from... Greg Hurwitz. Yeah, Greg Hurts, but also from AWA. Yep. Javier Salteris. Mark Texera. You got the wrong Ghost Rider artist. Is it really? Is yeah. it not both of them? It's no. just it's just Mark Texera. Okay. Um, yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a, a, a funny but very specific <laughs> timeline mistake. Yeah. The art is rough, but as a miniseries goes, I really liked it. Okay. And I read the whole thing in PDFs that they gave to it. I actually I read the first one. In hand, mm-hmm. in a comic. The rest were PDFs. But every time they gave us the PDF to number five, it didn't work. It went it went back to, like, just coming soon. So now they gave us a PDF to the trade, so I jumped to issue five. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like how they resolve the story, and I like how they set up for more. Uh, it's very it's very clever. It's a very overlooked book, so hopefully people can pick it up and trade. Okay. I read a- hit- AWS had a few fun books like that that yeah. really went under people's radars hit me hit me number three i read yeah i mean casual fling is the one for me that i'll point right to because that casual one is, fling is so good real clever and it's working straight in a straightforward specific, drama yeah it's a, it's a specific kind of like romance thriller drama thing that i think because it's, it's so difficult to figure out like what book is this like nothing no one's really making comics in those sort of genres that a lot of people just passed it by are you reading hit me no i like it okay i read three it's real good yeah, I haven't read uh, a couple new series previews I meant to get us. And Mitchell Davies keeps telling me to read specific Marvel previews, and I always, always, always forget to go over the Marvel previews. I do the ones that they send me in an email. Like, those. that's a reminder. Uh-huh. Like, oh, go read that. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I want to say the last time I tried to look at any, like, they timed out. I couldn't get them to work. I read Closet 2 from James Tynan. Okay. Still good. It's uh, I haven't read issue one yet. It's a little... It gets a little, like, family drama depressing. Okay. Because it's just about mainly, like, a a dad who's trying real hard and not making the right choices. Okay. But also scary things that live in a closet. Sure. Not just a closet, Dow. The, the closet. closet. The closet. Because you look at that. What is that over there? A closet. That's the closet. Oh, that's a closet. Of the room, This is that's the closet. Like a Batman. I don't think I know who that is. Uh, exciting detective comics changes coming up. Yeah, uh, Ramvi and Raphael Albuquerque are taking it over with Cy Spurrier and Danny doing a backup. Backup featuring different characters from the main stories. First one, James Gordon. I was a little unclear on this, but uh, Batman has a backup, and I think Chip Zdarsky's writing that too. There's okay. only one writer credit on Batman 125, but they list huh. a backup artist. One of the things about Batman 125 is they said, like, hey, look, we're showing off the brand new logo. It's... The same logo, just fatter font. Like, the letters are I fatter. I did not even notice. And you can see the bat symbol, the top of the bat symbol in it. Okay. Like, it's not a new logo. It's a slightly modified logo. Yeah, it did not make an impression on me at all. Yeah, it's it's barely different. Mm-hmm. Instead, of, there's no bat behind it. The bat's inside of it. Okay. Like, the bat's inside all of us. Makes sense. Trying to get out. Desperately fluttering to the light. Oh, no, I have a moth inside me. Mm. Yeah, sorry. That's not as helpful. No, it isn't, but what is helpful if you... Uh, oh, no. Gosh darn it. I had the perfect segue. I was going to redo the comics scholarship post from last week, mm-hmm. only I don't... All I have is Manscaped stuff here. You don't have that copy? I don't have that copy. Uh-oh. I'm very sorry, Joseph uh-huh. and Becca. I'll still put it in the uh, description, but basically it is a scholarship for anybody. The detail is available online. Uh, this is terrible. I've got none of the information in front of me. <laughs> That's so bad. I literally, I you saw me put my notes down. One less, I, I one less was patron now. Ugh, it ruined it. It's bad enough that last week I read the Manscaped joke as part of it that was not supposed to be read. This time I was going to do it straight, and I don't have it in front of me. Yikes. So details about that are in the description for people who know anybody, for comic stores that know anybody, for... Stores that want to post information about it. There's two different links. Mm-hmm. And I am 
Sorry that I forgot it. Ruh -roh. One of our patrons is hosting a comics art scholarship. Anyone registered for college this upcoming semester can submit. If you know an artist who has eagerly told you about their story and they have an online portfolio, send them to natosoup.com slash scholarship. That's N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P dot com so they can apply. Or if you'd be willing to put some flyers up promoting the scholarship in your store if you're a fellow retailer, you can download assets from the press kit at natosoup.com slash scholarship kit. And I also now feel like there was something I wanted to follow up on from last week's episode, but I don't remember what it is. Hmm. Several people, including, including Brian from Managed Comics, pointed out that their hours change on Google all the time as well. That is weird. I yeah. wonder why that. Yeah, so it's not... It's not I thought it was a customer going in and changing ours. Sure. It may just be some sort of weird... I think it's like an algorithm thing where it's, yeah. just, it's making assumptions of like, no, this is a mistake. We're going to fix that for you. And yeah. you have to go... That's Why would you mistake. have one day where you're open later? That's what... Yeah. I, I'd be worried if I was a store that had different hours every day. Stores aren't open late on Wednesday. Let's change this for them. Yeah. No, thanks. We did somebody show up around 5.15 and all the lights were off, but I was closing out. Mm -hmm. And they were standing at the door very confused looking at their watch, mm -hmm. looking at the sign. Yeah. Uh, I modified the open close sign because I can't find more suction cups. Okay. So what I did was I put a string through it. Okay. Then put a center hook. Okay. And hung it on that. Uh-huh. But then I crimped the hook. Okay. So the string can't go, and oh. I can just do the flippy. That's a good idea. We'll see if the one, if... If, if uh, it holds. <laughs> yeah. Or if, like, I didn't even try it to do it during the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. because... As soon as I opened the front door, it took off. We have top loads in the back. If you ever wanted to recreate the like the thing that goes in the top load, we we have we have those still in the filing cabinet. Okay, we would just no. Need... I mean, I mean, the, with the sign that we have now, because we have the thicker top loads. Oh, okay. I don't know if they if it's I yeah. Well, it I'll, I'll try. I don't know how thick it is. Yeah, they're in the. But I can I can look at that. They're in the back next to the yeah, yeah, box. Yeah, I do, I didn't assume it's a couple that... different sizes. You're right, that'll probably work. I just, in my head, the open-close sign is too thick. Sure, but, I, I mean, I like the string idea. We had, what, what we're talking about is we have a custom open and close sign for our front door. We recently, well, not recently, but a while ago, bought a new lit open and close sign, but it, we talked about it, I think, when we got it. It works on an app on your phone. We can program the hours and the colors and everything. It's all, um, not digital, but like LED mm -hmm. only, and it was very expensive, it was to replace the one we've had forever, which was okay, but dying. Yeah, I mean, it was sun faded and kind of burning out. Yeah. Well, this new one, the it's just never bright. Like, the open clo the open part, you see fine. There's no close. It's just open, lit, closed, unlit. Mm -hmm. But the hours, which are supposed to be on all day, just don't... It's so hard to see. Yeah, they're too narrow, so there's not enough light coming out to make them visible in the daytime. So we still have our handmade... Open and close sign using our Daniel Warren Johnson illustrations or Stephanie Minot or both. I think both. Well, uh, we had it made on a really nice, thick. thick foam material, plasticky foam thing. Yeah. But recently, it's had a tendency to run away. The and wind gets a hold of it for sure. Take off down the block. Yeah. Uh, thank you, DJ, for finding it yesterday oh, yeah. and bringing it back. Thursday was an exceptionally windy day yeah. in the windy city. So that's that sign is getting a little bit beat up. So. We'll see if this string thing works out or not. If it does, that'd be great because it's a, a such an economy of motion mm -hmm. rather than taking it off because the hooks are always spread so far apart to keep it from Slipping coming off, off the door, yeah. which it did for the most part, but when it takes a whole suction cup with it, what can yeah. you do? Anyway, that's neither here nor there. It was there. Now it's back here. We are here, but now we are gone. Thank you for listening. And keep reading comics. This has been Contest of Challengers. Thanks for listening. Keep reading comics. Challengers is located at 1845 Northwestern Avenue in the Bucktown neighborhood of Chicago, 773-278-0155. Keep up to date with new releases and events at challengerscomics.com. Like Challengers Comics on Facebook, follow at Challengers on Twitter, and help fund this podcast at patreon.com slash challengers.